December 20th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 20 from the Old Testament. Wine is a mocker, and strong drink is a brawler. Whoever goes astray by them is not wise. The king's terrifying anger is like the roar of a lion. Whoever provokes him sins against himself. It is an honor for a person to cease from strife, but every fool quarrels. The sluggard will not plow during the planting season, so at harvest time he looks for the crop but has nothing. Counsel in a person's heart is like deep water, but an understanding person draws it out. Many people profess their loyalty, but a faithful person who can find. The righteous person behaves in integrity. Blessed are his children after him. A king sitting on the throne to judge separates out all evil with his eyes. Who can say I have kept my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Diverse weights and diverse measures, the Lord abhors both of them. Even a young man is known by his actions, whether his activity is pure and whether it is right. The ear that hears and the eye that sees, the Lord has made them both. Do not love sleep, lest you become impoverished. Open your eyes so that you might be satisfied with food. It's worthless, it's worthless, says the buyer, but when he goes on his way, he boasts. There is gold and an abundance of rubies, but words of knowledge are like a precious jewel. Take a man's garment when he has given security for a stranger, and when he gives surety for strangers, hold him in pledge. Bread gained by deceit tastes sweet to a person, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. Plans are established by counsel, so make war with guidance. The one who goes about gossiping reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with someone who is always opening his mouth. The one who curses his father and his mother, his lamp will be extinguished in the blackest darkness. An inheritance gained easily in the beginning will not be blessed in the end. Do not say, I will pay back evil. Wait for the Lord so that he may vindicate you. The Lord abhors differing weights and dishonest scales are wicked. The steps of a person are ordained by the Lord, so how can anyone understand his own way? It is a snare for a person to rashly cry holy and only afterward to consider what he has vowed. A wise king separates out the wicked. He turns the threshing wheel over them. The human spirit is like the lamp of the Lord, searching all his innermost parts. Loyal love and truth preserve a king, and his throne is upheld by loyal love. The glory of young men is their strength, and the splendor of old men is gray hair. Beatings and wounds cleanse away evil, and floggings cleanse the innermost being. God, thank you for today's reading. I have a friend who I am going to be sharing verse 4 with. She breaks my heart a lot because she reminds me of me about 10 years ago where she can't see or acknowledge anything good, any of your blessings. All she does is whine and complain just like I used to about any little thing or big thing that goes wrong in her life. But verse 4 says, the sluggard, <clears throat> A sluggard will not plow during the planting season, so at harvest time he looks for the crop but has nothing. And I've tried to explain to her that if she can't see her blessings now, why in the world does she think that you are going to give her more with what she's asking for? And I definitely remember that time in my life, and once in a while I still do it, where it seems so much easier to count the woe is me parts of my life than the incredible blessings in my life and it's not that she doesn't have a lot she has a beautiful home she lives in uh, she has food she has money coming in it's not a lot but she has way more than most people do in the world but she can't see that all she can see are the bits and pieces of her life that seem to be falling apart and they're falling apart exactly for what verse 4 talks about is she, there was no preparation there was no hard work. There was no sewing of anything uh, in, the, in the processes that got her to the point she's at now. 
And I remember when I used to do that all the time. I remember looking back now where it came from. It was all about me. That any blessing I got in my life was, a, and of course it's a blessing because I deserve to have that in my life. It was just like sheer arrogance. And anything that went wrong was also all about me. And, and I was very vocal about the things that went wrong and, and that whoever was around me should work on fixing those things. <laughs> it was all about me as a very self-focused world. And I think before we have you in our heart, God, that our focus in life is so self-focused. We are our own world. We are our, our, we are our own God. We cannot see beyond our immediate needs, almost like a child, almost like a baby. And I suspect that my friend may have to hit a harder rock bottom before she turns to you, before her world becomes God-focused instead of self-focused, because that's how it was for me. You literally had to start taking things away from my life. And I look back on that time, and it's such a huge blessing to me. I'm sure at the time I was, I was very shocked that all these things that I selfishly thought I had acquired <laughs> were suddenly disappearing from my life. Things and situations and people. I'm afraid I see that coming for her unless there's a huge change of heart. God, in this process, according to your will for her life and according to your timing, help teach her and show her what a blessing truly, truly is. We deserve nothing that you give us. We deserve less than nothing. <laughs> we are such a sinful group of people. But because of your grace and your mercy, you give us a new heart and you give us a new way of looking at this world. And even though we still get things wrong, you still are there to support us, encourage us, catch us, discipline us, all out of this amazing love you have for us. And I know that you love her so much, but I do know that right now you're disciplining her because she's not learning these lessons. And it is definitely harvest time and she sees nothing. And what's really sad is she looks out and sees nothing and she starts blaming everyone else instead of taking stock of her own life and what she's done and what she's not done. God, I just, I just ask for a change of heart for her. That she could take responsibility and intentionally move forward in a positive direction in her life. Understanding that there are setbacks in life. There are things that go wrong. But it's not all about her. And she needs to start doing things instead of relying on everybody else to come to her bidding <laughs> to fix things. She needs to learn to rely on you, God. I spent my whole life self-focused because I thought I didn't need you. My life was a mess. In the midst of it, I didn't think it was, but it truly was a disaster, just like what she's going through right now. And then you came into my life and, and I received a, a new chance, a fresh chance, a pure chance to begin again, to start that planting season, that harvesting time, and fully rely on you your power, your strength, your day-to-day -day guidance of my life. God, I just want that for her so bad. I can see the blessings in her life. There's so many. And she can barely see one or two of them. God, I remember being that way. You were so dismissive of all of the incredible things you brought into my life back then. But anything I had in my life, I arrogantly thought that I brought it into my life. And I couldn't see. So I do understand where she's at. It just hurts my heart to know that that's where she's at. I can only imagine. I can barely imagine how much more you feel about that. God, watch over her. Guide her. Allow her to, to start again in a brand new planting season and truly understand the blessings of watching all of the things grow 
and the crop that she receives all because of you. I know that we refer to you many times as our shepherd, but sometimes I think you're also the master gardener <laughs> who teaches us how to do things, how to grow things, how to appreciate things, how to handle when storms come and destroy, destroy things. Thank you for all that you've taught us, God. Thank you for being with my friend. You know one of these days her heart will get it. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.